So this time around, we want to add a menu item on the left here, maybe just below movies, and it will allow us to browse our movies by categories. So drama, comedy, horror, whatever it may be. So this will give us a couple of things we can look at. The first is more experience with nested routing. And the second is, since once we click on categories, we'll have the categories listed here, we should be able to switch between categories. So it will be a list of all the available categories, and we'll just put a couple in for right now. So we're going to have to have that page, and we're also going to have to have the page that lists the movies that match a certain category. So this will give us a couple of things we can learn about. And one is more about nested routing. And the second one is, how can I pass information to a component, that's a true React component, using the React router? So let's get started. So I'll go back to my code, and I will look at app.js. And I'm going to put my link right here, right after the link to movies. So I'll copy that and paste it and just modify it. And I'll make the URL by-category, and I'll call the label movies, or just by category. Maybe just categories. Be as concise as I can. All right. So I have a link, but I have nothing in my switch statement that matches that. So let's put one in here. And I'll also introduce another word to you, another keyword we can use here. This will be root, and I'm going to add the keyword exact. And that will say only match this exact root. Now you may have noticed if you were playing with the React router, that the order actually does matter. And that's because when it's matching things, it doesn't actually look at the entire URL. It just looks at the first part of the URL. And that can be a little confusing. And the word exact, which is useful if you have a short menu like we do, actually forces the router to match exactly what's in the path statement. So I'll say match path, exact path slash by dash category. And inside of that, I'll root to a non-existent function, which I'll call category page. Now, that doesn't exist, so let's go down to the bottom, and we'll just create a function here. So we'll call the function category page, and of course it has to have parentheses. And we'll simply say, we're going to have a return statement, we'll get to that in a minute. But here's where I can use some of the information that's available to me because I'm using the React router. So I'm going to create two variables here. Let, and I'll just have them automatically filled from what the function I call returns, path and URL. Okay? And those will be equal to whatever this built-in function, use root match, returns. Now, hopefully, it imported that for me. Let's find out. Yes, use root match got imported up here. So this function actually returns some information that's available to us because we're using the React router. So we have path and URL. Now, path lets us build root paths that are relative to the parent root. And URL lets us build relative links. So we'll explore that right here. So what are we going to return from this? Well. All I want to return here is a list of categories. And we'll just put a couple in just to test things out. So I'll return, I'll wrap everything in a div. I'll return first of all a title, h2 categories. And then underneath that, I'll just put an unordered list. And we'll worry about making it pretty later on with a couple of LIs in there. So the first one will be a link. So I have to use the link keyword that's available to us from the React router. It's going to link to. And what I'm going to link to, I'll just give myself some space here, is has to be in curly brackets because I'm building this string, okay? And I'm using a JavaScript template, so backticks. And I'm going to link to dollar sign path, the variable I got right up there on line 72, slash, and we'll start with drama, okay? And then I'll close this and say drama. And then I'll just duplicate this line and change this one to comedy. And I'll call this one comedy. Okay? And I'm not using URL right now. I'm using path. So let's go see what that does. Let's go back and reload this page and click on categories. And now I have a link to comedy and drama. I'm going to inspect this just so I can see what was generated. So the link here is by dash category slash comedy. 
and the next one is by dash category slash drama. And that's because, if you look back in our code, I used path. And path lets us build root paths that are relative to their parent root. And the URL instead lets us build relative links. Now, sadly, because we only have one level deep here, if I change this one to URL, there shouldn't be any difference. We'll go back here and reload this page and inspect it again. So I'll inspect this one, and that is by category drama, and the one above it is by category comedy. And that's exactly what I expected to see, simply because my application is only one level deep at this point. So let's make it a little bit deeper. I'm going to go back here. And up in my switch statement, after by category, I'll hit return a couple of times just to give us some space so we can see what we're doing. I'll create another root. And this one is again going to be exact root. And I'll put it on the next line so it's readable. Exact. And on the next line, path will be equal to, in this case, slash by dash category slash drama. I'll hard code these so you can see exactly how it's going to work. And this time, I'm not going to just close my root tag and put the uh, link to an appropriate function or whatever in pointy brackets. Instead, I'm going to use this, this approach, render. In line, I'm going to render, and I'm going to make that equal to, and then opening curly braces, I'm going to pass some properties along here. Okay, here's how I can pass properties from the React router to a React component, which doesn't exist yet, but we'll build it in a minute. So I use my pointy syntax, and now I'm going to say root this to opening pointy bracket categories, which doesn't exist, but it will shortly. And I'm going to use the spread operator to populate the variable props. And the property I'm going to give it is title. And in this case, title will be equal to in curly brackets, and then I'm just going to put it in back ticks, drama. So it's just a string. Okay. Now I close my categories tag, and now I close my overall pointy brackets. Okay. So there's that one. And the last thing, of course, I have to do is on the next line, close my root because it's one entry. Got a mistake there. Oh, there it is. An extra typo there. Get rid of that. That looks better. Okay, so categories doesn't exist yet. And categories, we need to create a React component named categories. So I'll put it in my components folder. I'll create a new file called categories.js. And inside of that, I'll imrc import React in a component. And I'll export a default class named categories, which extends component. And it has to have a render function, of course. But what I'm going to render this time will actually include, let me just type the render function, I'll return, and I'll just say h2, category, colon, and now because I passed that property, I can go this.props.title. So this should work once I go back to app.js and import import categories from, try that again, from dot slash components categories. Okay, so that should work. So let's switch to our web, web browser and see if this all works as expected. So I go back to my home page, then I choose categories. And now when I click on drama, I should see this content area replaced with the component we just wrote taking the word drama from our props. And it works. And if we go back to categories and choose comedy, this is the home page because we didn't do that route yet. So let's go do a route for comedy. Back to our app.js. Find our switch statement. I'll simply copy and paste. I'll move this over where it belongs. And this one will be comedy. Comedy with a capital C. And now when I go back and choose categories and click on comedy, it should work. And categories 
drama, and it should work. Perfect! All right, so the next thing I want to do, and then we'll have enough of our front end built that we can go start working on our back end. The next thing I want to do is to have these do more than just say movie ID 1. So again, in our live application, when I click on this link, what will actually happen is our component will use the function that allows us to get data after the, con the component is rendered. We'll call our remote API and say, give me all of the information you have on movie ID 1 as JSON. Then we'll parse that JSON and populate a nicely formatted page that gives us all the information about that movie. And of course, we're going to simulate that in our next step, but it will give us something to work with and allow us to move on and start building our Go back end. And that's the part of this course that I actually enjoy. I enjoy Go far more than I enjoy JavaScript or React.